Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 162. Today is May 20th, 2024. I'm Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my Chthonic co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome. Ooh, man, you sure you haven't been playing Hades, too? <laughs> Uh, before we get started, we want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means that if there is something in the Cosmere that you haven't read and you're worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. Because tonight, we are talking about Ba'ato Mishram, one of the mysterious forces in the background of the Stormlight Archive. And we may even be delving into some of the uh, early chapters that Brandon has released. So um, for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube after the fact, we do want to remind you that it's possible for listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. We record episodes every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us and take an active part in the discussion. The show is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. It will, of course, continue to be free. But if you want to help us out, head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two per episode really helps us out as we continue to work to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel, where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. We've got a great community over there. We've got some fun discussions. And you'll also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. Oh, how are y'all doing today? Ah, uh, doing okay. And then, and, okay. and for all those people yeah. who get to see my face, I am not sunburned. I just didn't do any makeup. So, yeah. Hmm. This is natural face, Amy. So. I opened Jordan's eyes to a whole new uh, world of food oh my. yesterday. Yeah? I made smoked yeah. cream cheese. I didn't know you could do that. Well, I couldn't. Yeah, neither, neither did I. But you've already eaten most of it, so... You have no evidence. <laughs> That's the evidence. <laughs> Nothing. Can't prove anything. <laughs> oh, man. No, at that, and I also made some amazing smoked queso yesterday. Mm. And then... You do have evidence of that. Yes. Have, um, Amy, have you ever had chicken pozole verde? I don't know that I have. So it's a Mexican soup. It's uh, uh, salsa verde based. Okay. So like you take chicken and you cook it up in a pan and you season it with like uh, Mexican oregano and cum cumin. Mm -hmm. And then you add the salsa verde. Okay. And then chicken broth. Mm -hmm. And like you, you make the salsa verde yourself. It's like um, poblano peppers and... And uh, what are they called? Uh, jalapenos and um, and the green not coriander. What's the what's the American name for it? Margarine? Cilantro. Cilantro. No, that's the Mexican. Uh, that's the Mexican oregano. Marjoram is a good substitute for it. Um, gotcha. And lime juice and tomatillos. Oh, that's tomatillos. What makes okay. up most of it. And then you pour all that over and add in chicken broth and. Stir it all up and oh, it's so good. It's like a it's like a tart tangy soup. It's really it's very good. good. Mm -hmm. Can I mean, confirm. Oh, and then you add uh hominy, which Jordan doesn't believe is a real word. No. It's not. And I'm like, you grew up in the South, you should know what hominy <laughs> is. Hominy grits. Still sounds like you're making up a word. It just sounds like something you say when like you're really just kind of mumbling and trying to get you know eh, hominy. <laughs> And that's Hamana. <laughs> do, 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 do. Warbla. That's my thing for you, Bill. Is this is your Warbla is your This fake is word. your Warbla. <laughs> I have trust me, I have plenty of Warblas. Oh. I live with Jordan. <laughs> I don't warbla. understand what I'm being accused of. <laughs> oh goodness. Disbelieving. 
not believing people about words. That's what. You're a hominy denier. <laughs> I am a hominy no. denier. I'm a hominy truther. <laughs> you sold out to big hominy. Oh, I'm uh, going to expose you goodness. for your lies. They keep, they've kept me in grits my whole life. <laughs> We're totally on topic. Uh, yes. This is the oh, chatter yeah, portion of the know. show. This, this is on topic. Uh, this is what pe- people come for the Cosmere. They stay for the hominy hop. Some, I don't know. Some of them probably leave because of the hominy opinions. Oh, uh, ah. so, yeah, well, to be fair, we should probably move on. So let's move into announcements. Jordan, uh, how is the push towards full monetization going? Um, oh, shoot. I accidentally like, closed that window. Oops. That's that's good. That's I'm I'm close though. You're I'm doing real close. great. It's Monday. Thank you. We can tell I, for all of us. I too it's great. All right. Uh, we are at 972 subscribers, so we've moved up so a little bit. So we're getting ever so closer to the thousand we need there. Again, if you haven't watched us via the uh, or you haven't subscribed to us via YouTube, it's what we're looking for. Really need to hit that thousand. And then we really need to hit 4,000 of viewing hours in the last 365 days, which we are now at 3,397 total. So basically third, almost 40% of the way from where we uh, started at 3,000. Okay. okay. So it's uh, it's going well. That was a pretty big jump, actually. That's so, awesome. That's good. So those who uh, listen to my, my plea to to keep things running in the background last time. Thank you. Keep it up. All right. Well, after that, it's time to move into the Cosmere thing of the week. And Jordan, I believe you have the Cosmere thing of the week. I do, but unfortunately I've set things up so I can't see my show notes at the same time as this. So if you could get me the info on who it is, it was, uh, it's by Anya, is- Anya dream state. Thank you. I do. Was, I knew Anya. I couldn't remember the rest of it. Anya Dream State. This is uh, Anya's rendition of Ba Auto Mishram. I figured that was topical. Mm-hmm. And I really like this. I like the singer look for it. It frankly kind of reminds me of like a, almost like a demon from World of Warcraft. Yeah, I can huh. see that. Yeah, I, I've never really had a picture of a physical manifestation of Ba Auto Mishram. I just sort of see her as this formless force. We do know, at least from the the previous chapter, that the you know, as a singer, is one of the renditions that uh, that get hit. have been yeah. done in the past. Right. It's just it's just not one that I've been. Um, it it makes sense to me that much. that the most uh, the most cunning and clever and sapient of all the unmade would mm-hmm. get uh, anthropomorphized. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, and we've got some renditions of Sia and Nod as well for similar reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So, although with her, we've actually like, cause Shalon actually sees her, but we'll talk about that right. later. But no, this is a really very impressive rendition. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, is this an official so. one or is this just something, uh, something a fan put together? Cause that looks like something um, that I could see showing up in like the end papers or something. Uh, she's done a couple of Cosmere things that are on the copper mind. I don't know if it's official. Okay. Um, this might be commissioned work because uh, the 17 shard does uh, sometimes okay. commission artwork. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. Well, yeah. And uh, also minor Cosmere thing of the week. The thumbnail uh, is another rendition of Ba Auto Mishram by uh, Chamberlain again. Yeah. Okay. Which is the main. Cool. Since he gave us permission to yeah. use his art. So it's I the main one on the Bot Rishram page on Copper Mine. So it's just right there on the top right. Yeah. So. Definitely worth checking out. All right. Indeed. Well, uh, let's move into the Sanderson news. And at this point, I'm actually going to just sort of hand over the reins for the rest of this episode to Jordan because he's, he's running things today. Okay. All right. I can't wait to talk about sports no. with you people. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, dang it. Go sports. All right, uh, Indeed. All right. So um, Stormlight 5 final revisions at 55 percent. Brandon is still he says he's a little behind, but says he's like still feels pretty confident about finishing before makes. He's about to go on a writing retreat. Mm-hmm. So, yep. He's so he's advancing in the other direction. That's what retreat means. 
but the big news is Nexus sold out in one hour. <laughs> yeah, I was part of that mess. Yeah, I got my ticket yeah. like 40 minutes in and I'd been struggling the entire time to get uh, in and it was so bad because I was trying to make my own account on tabletop and it just was not working. Oh. So I eventually just used, yeah, I've had a, I used yeah. our account because I was like, you know what? I, I can use my own card. I can use my name. I'm just going to do that because this is not working and I do not want to knock in a ticket. So. Well, and we've, was, we've yeah. done that for bundles and mm-hmm. stuff in the past. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. it's bad. Um, Brandon did say that they, uh, they, they did expect this to be higher and they had, prepped tabletop for for this but it just was it It'll just far exceeded fun. their expectations yes. yeah no well part of the problem is also the fact that the salt palace is apparently is being stingy with space yeah. well and, 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 and we knew that th- that's the thing is a lot of people are getting upset at dragon steel and it's like they really did everything they possibly could this is this was completely yeah. out of their control people are like yeah it just chose it just weekend, sounds no yeah it just sounds like uh yeah, it sounds like the Salt Palace has some very firm. Uh, just this is how we do things, and yep. we don't budge for yeah, anything. Yeah, like it, it <laughs> seems like, so backwards to be like, oh well, we're only gonna sell, you, give you as much space for the following year, depending on how many hotel rooms people have booked. Versus, it's, there are lots of fans who live here in Utah and are not getting hotel rooms, and there's lots of people who are gonna get not hotel rooms, but airbnbs or find a friend who lives here or all these other things that are not going to account for those hotel rooms yeah it's kind of an archaic method it's at so this bad point. yeah well with as with a lot of things in these industries a lot of them are having difficulty with the yeah. new age that's yeah. not even Brandon's talked about that a lot especially with the publishing yeah. industry but mm-hmm. yeah so unfortunately not as many seats as we'd like and it sold out within an hour apparently you know, like 3,000 more people were trying to sign in than there were spaces available. There's a part of me that's wondering if like in, you know, two or three years, the next, like the next Stormlight uh, Sandercon, Dragonsteel Nexus uh, is going to be like, if they move it to like Vegas or something, the Vegas convention center, just because they'll need space. Oh man. The, but the the counter there would be I don't know if they would get as much space because then you lose out on all the locals. I think you'd be surprised. Yeah, I'm just like that. It's just one of those. It's it's the the push and the pull. Well, that, can, that, that's uh, what I'm saying for the next Stormlight one. Yeah, because for the next Stormlight one, it's gonna be insane. Oh yeah, because that'll be a huge gap. Yeah, ten years. That people will have been waiting for Stormlight. Hmm. Yeah. Or but, maybe uh, or maybe they build an enormous convention center on uh Sanderland property. Uh speaking of, I forgot to put this in the news. Um we basically know where it is. Have you guys seen that uh TikTok? That is next to Evermore. I mean, I've seen that it is Evermore. Well, do we What's the TikTok? Uh so uh yeah, I got to find it. Uh basically a guy uh I wish I could remember his name got the government records and showed that uh, they've bought. They Evermore. have bought Evermore. Oh, they okay. did? How yeah. did? I'm on TikTok. How did I not see this? TikTok. I don't know. The weird, here's the weird part. Here's the weird part. The person who sent it to me. This? this is the weird part. The person who sent it to me was my mom who doesn't read anything Brandon Sanderson. That's I don't know how funny. she found Man, this. Watch that after this now. Dang it. How did... Like, yeah, I'll have to. I just I forgot this because then my sister sent it to me like a couple days later, and she's the one who's actually has read the uh-huh. well had the books read mm-hmm. to her, and I'm just like you you lost a mom and her response just like I'm sorry what? <laughs> yeah, well I mean, yeah. and and nobody is surprised at this point though because like we we know that they owned owned the land next to Evermore. Uh, if you know Steve from Raffo, he, did a he did, actually did a video on it. <laughs> was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yep. It just, I, I just love his sprinting past. I'm trespassing. Across his empty field. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, Steve. But yeah. Good, good old Steve. <laughs> but yeah. So now, you know, who knows when they'll ever get started on that? Cause he told us that was probably four years ahead and 
Well, with that one, it's it's like, as developed as Evermore is. It's not really that developed. It's a bunch of little buildings. No. So it, they yeah. could kind of. Who knows do... which ones will even remain? Yeah, it's trippy. And I didn't even go there when it was actually hmm. open. I just went like on a random Saturday, which is sad. Uh, anyway. I, only, I went once and I wish I'd yeah. been able to go more times, but I'm glad. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see what Dragon still does with it. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah. Um, also, uh, as part of they couldn't get enough tickets, apparently Brandon's not going to be inviting his friends to this con so he can get more tickets out there. Yeah, because fortunately, a lot of his pr- friends are going to be like guest speakers and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. but yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and find it, if, that video and put it in the There's Discord. actually one of, one of his friends is in a Discord <laughs> group that I'm in. Um, and they were like, well, I may not be getting a ticket now. And we're all like, oh no, <laughs> because of not, you know, Brett Sanderson saying, well, I may have to get these uh-huh. people to people who bought plane tickets and stuff. Right. So that'd be really sad. Which, but speaking of, but, that was a very well done move. Oh, I yes. Think. I mean, yeah. Like that's yeah. a rough situation. And that's a situation that he could have just said, I'm sorry. Sucks to be you. I mean, like, well, not, not even, but like just but in could. a, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Oh, yeah. But, but he was like, I'm going to do what I can. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a step above and beyond what a lot of, lot would do. Yeah. Yep. So, and I, I can appreciate that they wanted to wait and make sure they had a response figured out. They had a solution in mind compared to just, we don't know what to do. This is awful. You know, compared to, okay, mm-hmm. this is our plan. This is how we're going to do what we can to fix it. Well, and it's like, there's only, some, like, he can only do that for like 20, 20, people. 30. Yeah. He was like, I only have like 30 tickets, something like that. Pe- yeah. Yeah. So, whew. it's going to be. But yeah. yeah. So, they're finding new problems that they have to solve, mm-hmm. but yep. that is the nature of trying to do anything slightly different. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What is the most important step? The next one. Always the next one. All right. Speaking of, let's move into our main discussion. This is one I've been kind of wanting to do for a while. And I'm really glad that we, in retrospect, that we kind of waited. Because the preview chapter that we got was topical, to say the least. Indeed. Ba Auto Mishram and the Unmade. Uh... When tackling this, I was like, okay, where do we start with this? And I decided let's start with the most broadest, most high level question. What is unmaking? I don't feel qualified to answer this question. <laughs> we should good, because if you I did, uh, you'd, be, no. you'd be Brandon Sanderson. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of references to the actual process. Mm-hmm. The most direct one that we know is the sibling. Yep, that's what I was thinking. Talked about mm. that when um when Rabonael was doing stuff, the sibling said that she was gonna flood uh the sibling with void light. And use use somehow use the surge of transformation because that's what Rabona Ale has. Mm-hmm. And once once she did this in the right way, it would un it would unmake the sibling. Yeah. Yeah. And so we don't know the full extent of what that is, but the sibling at the very minimum says that that would unmake it. Like my and I assume the sibling would have a little more insight. My my gut answer like and it's probably not right is like breaking the connection between honor and cultivation and the sibling is my you know just Mm -hmm. off the cuff guess but i don't know i'm feeling like there's probably other implications and other things that would happen but i don't know what those would be there's too many different variables that we don't know the details of but that's my like gut reaction is it's something to do with that All right. Um, so the other reference is in, and I, I recently just reread this chapter to refamiliarize myself. Um, was in the interlude from Zha Knot's perspective, okay. oh, yeah. which was an interesting perspective. I'm trying to find. I had a marker and I somehow dropped it. So I'm trying to find it. And I can't find it. Anyway, in it. 
uh, she says something to the effect of because if you in, in, in that chapter, if you'll recall, she is um, in the palace in Kolinar mm-hmm. and she is she talks about how she's basically preparing to sacrifice some of her children to save others. She calls it the the law of nature. Humans don't understand it, but she does. And which if you think of her as uh, something almost bestial, that makes a lot of sense that it has a very cruel sense of, uh, of just, this is the way things are. And specifically she has two windspread that she has, uh, enlightened as she says from her perspective Mm -hmm. and she's she sends them somewhere to be yeah to be uh to be distractions for who we know in retrospect is to me to me being the uh uh miss spren is that what the yeah the miss spren i think it is that uh will eventually bond relaine Mm. Basically using them as as bait so that Tumi can uh, sneak into Kolinar or into Urethiru uh, undetected by Odium. But she says uh, that Odium is going to find those windspread and unmake them to to basically gain their memories to understand what Ja Nott's actually trying to do. Mm. And oh. so there's something there's something about the unmaking process that opens them up because Ja Anna also talks about how if he decides she's not useful he'll unmake her again hmm. um dang, i'm trying to find where it was i wish i had marked this better but it, it almost makes me think of the way um shards work when they're splinter like the way that it happened with uh the door you know, like they were the the vessels were killed, and then you had almost this raw um, investiture just oozing investiture that that kind of just oozes around and then develops its own consciousness. Because we know that when investiture a lot of uh, large quantities of investiture are left to their lonesome, they will start to develop sentience. Yeah. And so it almost feels like it's like let's do, we'll kill the sentience. Yeah. Keep what remains, and then remold it. All right, I found the what I was okay. looking for. If Odium caught her in a verifiable lie, he would unmake her again, steal her memory, rip her to pieces. But in doing so, he would lose a useful tool. Hence the game. He'd format her hard drive, essentially. Hmm. It's, that's kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I found the other one. He would follow her children and see that they were indeed going to the tower. That would reinforce his decision. The one he hoped that he, he would make now. Uh, oh wait, no, that wasn't the right one. Dang it! I thought I found it. Wouldn't once found that. Uh, here we are. Once he had found her windspread and unmade them to loose their minds and memories, he would hopefully be content. Yeah. So, Sia which and not- kind of actually the thing that reminds me of is actually what preservation did to himself, because he loosed his mind as well. Hmm. Interesting. Um, no, the the thing that'll be interesting with Sia and Not is again what happened at the end of uh, Rhythm of War, because Sia and Not was playing race, was, or was t- trying to play race, yeah. and suddenly her opponent has changed. Mm-hmm. Now, will she know that it's a different person? Because yeah. as an, as an well, unmade, she may have a different kind of connection and be able to recognize. Well, I, I think she 100%. Different. No, I think she actually knows because the okay. final line of the, the chapter is, and Jean Anoff herself, she would go with Taravangian and watch him as asked. And she would stay close for Taravangian was a weapon. Hmm. And specifically, she uh, also comments in this thing about how she can tell that uh, there's, there's a growing, um, tension between the vessel and the shard because whenever she questions she can feel that the vessel is angry that she questions at all but the shard loves questions because questions invoke passion Hmm. and and so they're at odds and she's like okay there's a there's a gap there that i can i I can can use use to break it apart okay 
And so to me, it sounds like she's 100 percent in on the plan to to sep to separate them. Make Odium mm. 2.0. Yeah. Mm. Tudium. <laughs> Todium. So many names for him. Ugh. So they're fun ones. But yeah, so that so that's the start of just what is unmaking. And at the very minimum, it somehow loses memories and it obviously destroys whatever is done and we know that uh there was a question someone did a it was an interesting uh word of brandon where someone asked him are they as in they're made of nothing or is it they were previously made and then unmade because apparently i forget which language it was in their their native language the words would be very different hmm. and so brandon then had to clarify interesting and so, yeah, I, th I thought that was in it's another one of those. Whenever you localize, you you start to run into problems. Yeah, because there just are certain phrases where it's like, well, actually, it doesn't quite translate. Same way, because if it's the first time versus multiple times, or yeah. But anyway, so then there's one other big question I wanted to tackle that uh, I just thought was an interesting subtopic of. It's interesting that there's nine unmade mm -hmm. and it's like, what, what are the unmade originally? Like what causes an unmade to be created? Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems to be implied. These are some sort of great spren that are somehow corrupted by odium. Mm -hmm. Right. And <sighs> there's another theory that's interesting though. Some people think that and this may actually just tie into it. Is that, it related to the heralds? Yes, that mm -hmm. every single time that the heralds broke, it it allowed like somehow the breaking of a herald allowed for the creation of an unmade. And because nine of them broke, but one didn't, that's the actual reason there's nine. Oh. I wouldn't say just the breaking of a herald because I think they broke more than like each of them broke more than once. Well, and so that ties into the theory, actually, that's interesting. The theory then says the the number of times someone broke is every time they broke it empowered it gave the unmade more power and so ba auto mishram for example would be whichever herald broke the most mm -hmm. is the one tied to ba auto mishram whereas the ones that are mindless they broke less times just uh, once or twice, relatively yeah. few times right. yeah it's it's a very interesting thought because like you said there were nine um heralds who broke but also um nine as we know is odium's number yes so. i as cool as that second theory sounds i don't know that i would go with that i mean because we That's do we know when the unmade first appeared were they there before all of the heralds were breaking or that we do not know he raffled a oh. specific question on that okay because that would be what would determine it for me is if we know they were around before the heralds were breaking right. then that doesn't work but yeah. otherwise i don't know and so basically the theory would be something to the effect of the break because of the way the oath pack works every time they broke it created a gap that gave odium the ability to do this mm -hmm. the other thing that's interesting about that theory is the unmade are kind of special because unlike the void spren and the fused who always go back to braze in between desolations the unmade remain meaning they are part of Roshar in some fundamental way. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, so I actually think it, with this theory, it both could be true at the same time. It could have, Odium could have added aspects to them when the heralds broke or he took power or, or yeah. it may have just been that because we know that the Spren were there on Roshar beforehand and I'm, I feel like the Enmade were there in some form, but I, we don't have, the details. Yeah. Well, and so that's one of the theories is basically that they were big, important spread similar to the Night Watcher and the Storm Father that existed before. Mm -hmm. So they're a fundamental piece of it. And then when they break, it allowed Odium to do stuff to them mm -hmm. because the Oath Pact is because these shards ha are bound by these oaths that they have made. Yeah. Which now, would mean the sp the splinters are as well. The connection to the heralds has been the one that I've kind of 
been playing with in my mind. I, this is a lot more thought out than anything I've had, though. So I, I, I do. Like yeah, I, I've done a dive into theories on our Cosmere to mm-hmm. to go do this. And then there was one more question that I thought was interesting. Hmm. Um, so we see um, Dalinar. He's able he's able to uniquely uh, capture the thrill in the drop because he is so connected to Mm -hmm. it because because of how much time they've spent together and the theory is uh one he he can do it one because he's the bondsmith and so we've already seen this happen or we know it happened in the past with baoto mishram a bondsmith was able to bind a an unmade into a uh, a gem but the other thing that's interesting is people are asking the question can an unmade be remade or as i prefer remastered see and and i feel like there's something there there's something sort of to a degree because i feel like sia anad is kind of on that path yeah i feel like if we if like i don't i don't think it's a it'll be a full conversion type thing like a full reversal but i think it'll they could be remade into something different and i jean not in particular is very interesting yeah. sort of like um the you know the sword narsil was reforged into underreal it's like it's not the same sword but it was reforged into something new. i think if that, that's kind of yeah, how i, I see think the... if we do get it that happening it's going to be in the back half of the books because that's going to be a big thing oh yeah so we might get hints at it in book five, well, but I don't think we're going to see any of that happen until later. It, and I think it depends on what happens with Sia not. Yeah. We know that she's taking a bigger, like it feels like she's taking a bigger hand in the next book after the ending of book four. Mm. Well, okay. So actually you bring her up. Uh, the, my next plan was to actually go through the different unmade here. And uh, let's just go to Sia not. Um, we'll end with Ba Otto Mishram, but mm-hmm. uh Jean Nott's very interesting. I rereading her uh, interlude, I had forgotten so mm-hmm. much about it. Uh, one thing, she has delusions of grandeur. Uh-huh. Um, she openly states that she is a god and that she she want like she wants to be a god and worshipped. Um, which is like, okay, well, you know, trip, you know, it's a good thing you're in this. Yeah, you know, it's important to have goals. Yeah. Um it's also interesting, just I, I forgot her whole perspective of she enlightens the Spren. She doesn't corrupt mm-hmm. them. Uh, in particular, when she sends Toomey off, apparently, I for, I, had, I can't believe I forgot this. She was sending Toomey to go talk to Mraze. Oh, really? And Yes. That, and I forgot that. I don't remember specifics. Uh, so uh, yes. Forgotten. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and read it. Um I will go, mother, to the tower, to this man, Marais, as you have promised. Odium will see you, she replied. Odium will try to unmake you. I know, but Odium must be distracted from you as we discussed. I must find my own way, my own bond. Go then, she said, but do not bond this human because of what I said. I merely promised to send a child to investigate options. There are other possibilities there. Choose for yourself, not because I desire it. And then this is the so that's the first thing is she's like, no, no, no. You have options when you go mm-hmm. there, Tr- you know, trust your gut. But this is the one that is interesting. Thank you, mother. He said, thank you for my eyes. So why? So, cause there's that question. Why would, a? Uh, cause it's one thing for her to corrupt low level spread, like wind spread and, you know, a- anticipation spread and anger spread and pain spread. Mm-hmm. They're mindless. Um, but high spread going to her willingly is an interesting concept. Why would they do that? Um, and it seems to me looking at this, they do it for similar reasons why they bond humans to get, they gain something from this, uh, mm-hmm. this thing, a new perspective, more power, more cognizance. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like, how did I forget all of this? This is juicy because there's so much to remember. So much. Yeah, but no. So she, she's interesting. Um, she's clearly plotting stuff. <laughs> she's also the one that uh, she talks about how 
the fused can see her or at least feel her presence. And she's sort of surprised by that. She's like, they shouldn't be able to see me unless it's in a reflection. Cause that's how she's, she's, Shalon yeah. saw her. And apparently she's just doing this dance with the uh, race of they both know she's lying about things, but they pretend neither one knows the other one knows the other one's lying because uh, he doesn't want to to unmake her unless he's absolutely sure he can't use her anymore. Because she's an expensive yeah, tool. It's a very toxic relationship between the two of them. But yeah, I don't know. It's just is interesting because uh, it's also interesting because it's clear she's also growing in cognizance and in different yeah, ways, cognizance. Yeah. She she also has the weird thing where she she talks about how she's in between both uh, worlds, both the the cognitive and the physical, mm -hmm. and just her perspective of how to move through them is weird because. It's not she it's not that she has a foot in both. It's that she's like in between. And so she can see both places and they don't line up fully. So she moves more in one than the other. And it's very fascinating. I wonder if to get to the spiritual realm, they're going to have to work with Sia and not because she has that sort of. Yeah, I could see that ability, perspective, whatever. I'm sorry, I saw, Texas Blade just brought something up that is so obvious in retrospect, I didn't even think about it. Oh. He says, thank you for my eyes. What if he was a dead eye and she somehow restored him? Interesting. A more Actually. literal, you gave me my eyes. Hmm. We don't know. We've I never even... we've never seen a dead eyes version of... Uh, of Miss Bren. Of Miss Bren, have we? I don't think so. No. Because it's must have been cultivation or not um those those aren't those aren't the uh the ones on the ship are they yeah they are the they they're on the ship with okay the... then we have then we have seen a dead eyes because that's the uh um... well no no we haven't seen we haven't seen a dead eyes they're on the ship but they're not the the dead oh, eyes not the, the reacher okay yeah because they had both miss spren and uh oh gosh what Light are spren? the wheel shaper or no uh, those are oh I. Uh, I have copper mind up. Come on, I, I can do blanking. this. Why My am brain I blanking? Is not working today. No, it's not Truth Watcher. Day. Will Shaper. That one's is that Peak? No, it's not. Reach no. Reachers, known as Light Spren. Yep, it is light you got spren. it. Okay, I was right. Peak Spren are the yeah. Though the oh, Miss Spren are the ones <laughs> where the Miss Sprens are the one with the misty bodies and like the the drama masks for their oh, face. Oh, okay, okay. I keep thinking of the plushies now because it's like an easy. We had them all like side by yeah. side, so that's what I start picturing now. But yeah, Jean not is the. One. It's just interesting because I just remember when I was doing the the title belt for uh, Rhythm of War, you know, and I had everyone guess, you know, who will we get an interlude chapter for, and just no one guessed Jean mm -hmm. not like not. Nope. Well, no one. No also one would have guessed. No one guessed Cheery Cheery either. No. So yes, no one guessed Cheery Cheery. No, we're really bad at guessing those. Well, it's, it's, hard. it's just because one, w well, because there's, I was sit, like, if someone gave me a list and they're like, you know, of characters, it's like, what do you think about this person? Well, no, that's an unmade. There's no way he would do that because that's, <laughs> that's way, that's giving us way too much, probably. But then again, it, like, I say mm -hmm. that and I should then, like, but then again, literally the first book I read of his was Mistborn, where we get Kelsier's perspective all the time, who's openly planning for his Thanatos gambit and just constantly getting away with it by being like, oh, that's some more. Eh, we'll have to think about that later. That's not important mm. right now. And just constantly dancing mentally around the oh, fact yeah. that he's he's planning to sacrifice himself. <laughs> so Brandon's Brandon is perfectly comfortable with uh doing the cups game in front of us and like, eh, you yeah, you don't know what you're looking at. Don't know what you're looking at <laughs> until it's boop. all right. I'm calling it now the new, the next unmade we're going to see hmm. is going to be the whole corrupted sprint and it's going to be stick the great and powerful. I knew it. They've given up I'll on the sibling. The sibling this. has defied and said, I'm, I'm sticking with Navani, but stick. Indeed. All right, so let's talk about the other unmade. And again, we'll get Battle of Mishram will be uh, where we go after the break because um, we're going to have a lot with her. Yeah. So 
Um, some of these we haven't seen much of. Let's start with Ashurtmarn, the actually, heart actually, of the Revel. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, this might be a uh-huh. good time to start the, the to do the break, and break, then do and them. then we'll just come out oh. back to all of them afterwards because oh, we're okay, forty cool. minutes in. So okay, so cool. let's just yeah hold off, and we'll see the rest of you in just a moment. Okay, and we're back. All right, so we're gonna go through the various unmade and just you know take a look at this. Uh, this, Motley crew. you know, just fun cast of characters. <laughs> Asher Marn is uh, the life of the party, the heart of the revel. The life of the party. Oh, goodness. It's the beating the heart, heart of the of, revel. Makes it's me the think heart of, of the party. You got to say heart. You got to mix heart in there. The heart of the revel makes me think of a boss in mm. FF14. And if any of our FF14 listen, playing friends are in the audience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The revel. This, this was the... Uh, the unmade that was at the heart of the Colonar Palace, mm-hmm. driving everyone inside to uh, excess and debauchery. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, for our Warhammer fans, this is our Slaneshi creature. But it's also kind of um, Nurgle, too, because there's lots of decay. Yeah, because they just let things rot. It's, yeah, and, it's, yeah. Ugh, it's, it's like if Nurgle and Slaanesh had a baby. It's the heart of the rebel. I like the way you um, pronounce it. It sounds it sounds kind of sillier. What? Like I, I think of it as Nergal, and Nergal sounds like you know <laughs> something that. Well, like, so like n- a disease. Nergal's a di- Nergal's from Warhammer. There, it sounds like a disease that Smurfs would get. Oh sheesh. Uh, well, appropriate enough, but that's Warhammer lore. Um, no, but the uh, the thing that's interesting about this one is this is one of the mindless ones. Uh, we're told there's mindless ones, middle ones, and the smarty pants. And this is one of the mindless ones. Um, I remember Shalon tried to send him away the way she had done to uh, one of the ones we'll talk about later, yeah. Ray Shafir. And uh, he did leave, but it was clearly just to, cause they were supposed to get killed by the corrupted oath gate spread. Mm-hmm. And Jean not interceded there to make sure it didn't, but we haven't seen where it was after that. Cause it disappeared. Yeah. So we don't know where he is right now. Sorry, or, it which one? Asher, Asher, Asher where it disappeared okay. to, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know where it is right now. After Shalon played yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's though, because we saw it in the cognitive realm and it was like grown over the oath gate. It sounded the most like Lovecraftian of descriptions. Ooh. It yeah. reminds me of like Zerg Creep. Yes. Yeah, it's definite Zerg creep. But this one, there wasn't much to it other than just the fact that it drives people to indulgence. Mm -hmm. Um, The next one is one I forgot existed because we just don't uh, have anything on it. Um, Chemorish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is also known as the Dust Mother, Mm. which is interesting because Chanarach is Springer. The dust, yeah, is a dust, the dust bringer herald. Hmm. And so I'm wondering if that's a language thing or if there's some sort of connection there. Again, if it's something tied to the heralds, mm-hmm. but we don't know anything about this one. It's, it's, there's in the copper mind, it's suggesting that from the length of the name, it seems like they're more intelligent, probably, but we don't have yeah. details. Yeah. Yeah. So. Then the other one, this one's int- Diagon Diagonarthus. Diagonarthus. I can't. Diagonarthus. Di- yeah. I'd like that better. Yeah. Diagonarthus. The Black Fisher. Um, this is another one that we don't know about. This one's supposedly a median intelligence. The They think it's involved in the scouring of Amia from mm-hmm. Hesse's Mythica. Yeah. So mm-hmm. don't know. Don't know why we think that, but, but the, apparently yeah. they think it is. Um, the other thing that's interesting is we do have a um, a death rattle associated with this one um, where they said, uh, let me no longer hurt. Let me no longer weep. Diagonarthus, the black fisher holds my sorrow and consumes it, which sounds very odium. Yeah, I was going to say that feels very odium esque. And I don't think he would reabsorb Diagonarthus or anything like that, but it makes me it just it no. just is weird that way. I don't know. Well, it would make sense that all the all these unmade can do something that odium can. They're yeah, 
they're his splinters. Yeah. So this one might be able to do the whole, you know, take your pain thing. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause we, cause obviously odium can corrupt as well. We see that in Ja not, uh, and the if you think about it, the heart of the revel is very similar. It's just instead of it being I will take away your emotion, it's I will I will lead you to indulgence so that you can forget your pain. You're so focused on the good that you don't have the capacity to sense the bad yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's a, it's any type of uh, any type of where you indulge to deaden your your mm-hmm. your emotions. Uh, Moloch's one that wait, we wait, haven't wait, wait, wait. seen. The, no, the what? other the other thing about the uh, the black fisher, like the name for some reason for me always makes me think of the Fisher King, but which is actually Arthurian. Yeah, in origin. I'm trying to remember where that like there was but a with a river not, or so, something. I thought. So yeah. the thing this reminds me of actually is Lovecraftian stuff. Um, well, well, this it, first of all the name. The thing is, uh, each is of very the each of Dagon. the unmade had some sort of. A connection either like when in Brandon's inspiration was either like a Middle Eastern mythology or um, Lovecraft. Like it was yeah. both of them. They're all kind of mixed in together. Well, and, and this one in specific is both because uh, Lovecraft also would bo- bo- borrow names of uh, gods and spirits from right. the Middle East yeah. to for his lore. And so and so this is very close to Dagon, which is. Oh, uh, yeah which I believe is a fish God. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, Yeah. That sounds familiar. uh, At least in Lovecraftian lore. I don't know in like actual mythology, but I know it's a fish God in Lovecraftian lore. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, but we haven't seen anything about him other than that one, uh, that one death rattle. Well, and he he was also, he was also briefly mentioned by uh, Jezrium when he was talking to Dalinar when he was like the, the crazy drunkard man, he, he mentioned three, uh, unmade included. Yeah. I forgot about oh, that. Uh, anyway. I, I, I just came across it again, but yeah, it's, uh, gotcha. I looked up, um, because, because Hesse, what Hesse was, or Hesse was thinking, wasn't sure that Dagon Arthas was actually an unmade, but the, the, um, evidence that people are saying that he actually is the final unmade, is that he that Jezrian listed him along with Reshafir and Moalach. Mm. And so, gotcha. so a quick Google search found that um, Dagon was a Mesopotamian god of bounty, fertility, and vegetation. So, hmm. maybe not water related, but anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, Moalach. This is the death rattle unmade. Yeah. Um, well, actually, and the, the quote on. Uh, on the copper mind is the Jezrian quote. Moloch is close. I can hear his wheezing, his scratching, his scraping at time like a rat breaking through walls. That's a which nasty is just visual. it's very death rattle. Like yeah. Well, and it's the, also the that's wheezing, also very the scraping, Lovecraftian. the wheezing, the scraping. That's what the sound of an actual death rattle when someone is dying. Because you know, a death rattle is like the way people start to breathe as they're dying. Yeah. And. Well, and the thing that's interesting is we, because obviously we know that uh, Teravangian was making great use of the death rattles, uh-huh. and so we know that the the death rattles, or that Moalok was in. Um, oh my goodness, Carbranth. I forgot the name of the kingdom. Carbranth, yeah. No, but it the greater kingdom. Oh, uh, Vidin. No, Yakaved. Yakaved. Yeah, yeah, because we know it was there, but Teravangian mentions that it's moved to the horn eater peaks, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which makes me think whenever we get our, uh, horn eater, oh, man, short novel. When we get our horn eater story oh. that there's, we're going to be dealing with Moloch stuff. Cause that's the thing. We haven't seen Moloch or anything. We just know the effect of Moloch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, well, and, I see- and again, this goes, this goes to the idea of all of them having a, some, they can do something that, Odium can do. In this case, this has some future sight. Also, yeah. Moloch seems to be another one of the more primal, like less cognizant, mm-hmm. more of a force of nature ones. Yeah. It just moves. Like the heart of the revel and and so. And well, and the next one I was gonna bring up, Ner, the thrill, Nergal. Nergal. Nergul. Nergal. Nergi. Um 
different fandom. This is the one we have the most experience with. Yeah. As he and Del and I were best buds. I, I yeah. really thought it was interesting the way that it was described when Dalinar rejected the thrill and you fe- like he sensed almost a hurt, like a feeling of hurt feelings. But when he, re- when he, he rejected, he's like, Wait, we were friends. Why are you like, it's well, just almost like a, a dog animalistic. Yeah. It was just like what? What did I do? We were we were, we were good. I thought we we were doing the thing, and it was so great. And now you're you're uh-huh. rejecting me. Yeah. But very similar to Asher Marn, this one takes away your emotions, but instead replaces it just with pure, unadulterated battle lust. Mm-hmm. Which again, with Odium, you can't have my pain. Yep. Yep. Well, and you just think of the. Uh, the vision that uh, Renarin had where he saw his father fall and just this idea of him giving himself fully over Mm -hmm. to the battle lust. And it's, it's not just the black thorn. Now it's the, it's the black black thorn unbound Mm. and supercharged. (laughs) This is the one that I, other than, uh, other than Baal of Ishram, the one I was looking forward to talking about the most, because this is the one that has benefited the most and more confusing as a result of books we have since had, Reshafir, the Midnight Mother. Yeah. Well, wait, wait. I, I had more to say about Nergal. Oh, did okay. you? Okay, yeah, sure. Because remember, like now Nergal is currently in the King's Drop. Which is which the they dropped, the bottom of the they ocean the in an aluminum ocean. box. And it's just sort of a... Mm-hmm. Whenever they drop something into the bottom of a bottomless chasm, you're like, somebody's going to go get that. Someone's going to go get that. So- well, not, I, well, because I like about that is the fact that they openly admit that this isn't the a great solution. It's uh-huh. just the best one they can think of because if it's in a city, they'll find it. The other thing that's interesting is apparently Hoyd was part of the group that came up with this plan. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking the What's box gonna happen- probably does a lot to keep it cut off even more or pe- make it harder for people to send yeah. that box is well, going to so, start to leak and you're going to have some just angry fish going nuts man. in the ocean well so so, so someone That's where sharks uh, came I can't, from. someone yeah someone asked brandon about it and he said that even if they put it in an aluminum box and kept it in a city they'd be able to find it um it'd, it'd be too visible in the spirit or the cognitive realm mm. to ignore And so I feel like it'll be more visible in the cognitive realm because in the cognitive realm, it's going to be sitting on top of the water blocks because the water is is the land. The thing is, it might be somewhere where no one is, though. Hoyd's the one who apparently was advising uh, Uh, a yes, not. I just don't feel like this is a good plan. Well, and the thing is, even if you know where it is, you still have to then get to a bottom of an ocean. Which is hard, even with the magic powers of the fused, not going to be easy. And I mean, even if they get to it in the cognitive realm, then they have to like grab, you know, flip, and then they're at the bottom of the ocean, which may or may not be. A and it's problem. and it's still inside the, the box there. inside of an aluminum box. Now, again, it's not a permanent solution. It's just the best of bad solutions. Mm-hmm. I've, so, I've, yeah. just, I've seen Jumanji. I know that <laughs> boxed evil always comes up. We'll have to see what happens. Um, Ray Shafir, the Midnight Mother. Mm -hmm. Before, we're just like, okay, she has some sort of uh, ability to do these weird, inky, spren things. And now, Midnight Essence is something that has appeared elsewhere in multiple locations. (laughs) Yeah, that's what the, uh, is it the Midnight Sea, the Obsidian Sea? Yeah, yeah, with Midnight Essence, with it gaining form with the Lou Hell bond. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is interesting because it's, it's no longer just, Oh, this is just a thing she can do. It's wait, she's doing something we see elsewhere. Is that because she's attached to the aethers? Is it because this is a, a mockery of that power that yeah. Odium's doing? I, what, what is I this? Cause that's the thing is the, 
the midnight essence that we see on um on Lumar is not tied to the shards. I think it's, it, yeah. it's a completely different kind of magic. I think Sanderson, I can't I don't remember where the quote was, but I think he did answer something about this and it was from what I remember that it was it's not the exact same thing, but there is like the investiture is working in a similar way type thing and it's kind of what so it, it makes me think that there's like a principle within investiture that does stuff like the black goo of this and it happens to be on lumar yeah. as well as on roshar and he didn't i don't i don't think he specified much beyond that and i know there's probably more details i'm forgetting but i remember he did address it and it is not exactly the same but they are you are correct to say they look very similar yeah. Well, and then something that's interesting about it is because we know that at least her midnight creatures, they're they're drawn to violence because mm-hmm. um, they were constantly mimicking violent acts yeah. performed by others, which is interesting because that it, it's kind of similar to creation spren in that when you're drawing stuff, creation spren start trying to mimic things and. It's like they're trying to 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 do that, and so there there's something like there's something artistic about this. Uh, about death and violence. Yeah, hmm. like a splatterhouse film or something. But the thing that's the other thing that's interesting about it is um, one, Shalon was able to to banish it because apparently this thing had previously been bound by a light weaver. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting mm-hmm. because um, the other two that we've seen be bound were were done by bondsmiths, and so it's interesting that it's not just bondsmiths that can can perform this. And there's part of me that wonders if there's we've seen something that's a midnight essence be bound by artists in a different book in uh, uh, Yumi. Yeah, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. We see the artists bind these inky essences by giving them a, f- a form and like binding them to it. Mm-hmm. it I remember oh, it, it yeah. very much reminded me of the Fire Sprint interlude. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I'm wondering if, however, a, a, a light weaver bound Ray Shafir in the past, I'm wondering if it's similar to the the nightmare painter process that they did something they that captured the bound into a specific yeah, form captured the essence of it in some kind of art form and that kept it trapped in that for a time and so it's just this one is it, it's what's great about it is we still don't have any answers of any kind but the secret projects have suddenly given this entire you know fight a very different cast to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a whole new like level of what is going on. We don't know. It's, it's the traditional Brandon. I'm going to answer a question by giving you seven more questions. You're like, but I wanted the one. Oh man. The, uh, I remember also Shalon, like, sir, like is in trying to understand her. She theorizes that she might have been, a creation spren in the past or maybe even a person. Hmm. And again, we don't know what the unmade are. So yeah, who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then uh, the last one, I just, I don't have much on this one because I can't figure out anything is Yelignar, which is the one where you swallow it and you get the other surges. That's where that's what happened with uh, what's his bucket. Oh, L- Lord, with uh, Amaran and and with uh, and with uh, a- what's her bucket? A Sudan, yeah. Oh yeah, Asudon. Apparently, his other name is Blightwind. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, which is interesting. We know he's like a black mist or something in the cognitive realm because. Mm. Uh, oh dang it! I, we're doing great with names right now. Um, Eshenai's sister, Venli. Oh, okay. Venli, because Venli can like partially see into the cognitive realm. Mm -hmm. And she saw like the two unmade in it. And she's like, oh, crap. Like, what is going on? Yeah. And one of them was 
this smoke. And uh, yeah, so now we don't we have no clue. Like what it actually is like, if it's smart or anything like that. Um, Yeah, it's just just one of those things that. What he does is completely busted because it gives you a surge binder version of a Mistborn. Although I kind of doubt it has. I, I I don't think it gives all 10 surges. I think it gives only nine. Yeah, it says here it only may only grant the nine. Which would make sense because, I mean, heck, the the fuse don't believe it's a true surge. Mm-hmm. Still still trying to figure that one out. But. But it started again, another secret project like you start sprouting crystals everywhere and like your chest cavity starts caving and it's like that's very similar to what's going on in the sunlit man well and it's also reminiscent of the uh aether of amber amberite oh which Which one was that one that seals up holes that's the one that turns into like rock and Mm, stuff like that. right so well, that one I'm interested to know more if it's like if it's an actual mindless one or if it actually has a personality and what motivates it because it's almost like it's not even an unmade it's more of a MacGuffin than anything swallow this get power probably get consumed by it because you're not you know awesome enough well and like you see people warning against swallowing gemstones earlier in the series oh yeah yeah that's true in in my research for this, someone asked what would happen if Lyft swallowed the, the king's drop. <laughs> and Brandon, of course, raffled it, but I'm just sitting here like, what are what are you trying to do? <laughs> are you trying to make her metabolize an unmade? I don't need to see that. Why? No. <laughs> Except that she doesn't metabolize the investiture. She turns regular food into investiture. It's kind of the opposite. Yeah. yeah so, mm. Mm. I just don't know what people are trying to do. They're trying to break oh. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon will break his own rules. Don't worry about it. He invented compounding, remember? <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the main event, though. Ba Otto Mishram. What do we know? Nothing. We know she mm-hmm. brought the false desolation. Mm-hmm. We know that she somehow was connected enough to the singers that she could give them forms of power. Well, and that her binding is essentially what sent them into um, slave form. Yeah. And caused dead eyes to happen, Mm -hmm. which is interesting because it implies that she is connected to much more than just, just the singers we know that she's chilling in the spiritual realm apparently Mm -hmm. yeah that's the big one where it's like okay well i didn't think you guys could do that but apparently in a gem um, not even not even free but she's in a gem yeah yeah what something struck me as as i was thinking about this today is that what they did to ba auto mishram is almost the inverse of what they did or what uh, Odium did to devotion and dominion. Cause there he took spiritual beings and shoved their essence into the cognitive realm. Right. And in this case, we're taking a, a mostly cognitive being yeah. and shoving it into the spiritual realm, mm-hmm. hmm. which makes me wonder if Malishi, who was the bondsmith that apparently did this, uh, maybe knew something about that. And maybe that's how they got the idea. The idea of turning one of his plans, I mean, against him. Roshar does seem to be one of the more cog- or cog- or Cosmere aware uh, planets. So, but yeah, this is uh, this is interesting, just as far as a plan goes. But just one, the name is an interesting name. Because the name uh, people have pointed out sounds almost uh, Shin. Yeah. Because hmm. you have, the you know, Seth, Son, Son, oh. Bolano. Bolano, yeah. Yeah, except that they refer to her, like when they shorten her name, they refer to her as Mishram. Yeah. So, 
but still it has it does have a similar cadence to it yeah and so it's which is like okay is that because there is something shin connected about her who knows um but just the fact that she could give them forms of power is interesting because from the Jean not chapter Jean not uh, actually talks about Ba Auto Mishram. Uh, let's see, where was it? Ja Nat did not consider herself the most clever of unmade. Certainly she was one of the more intelligent, but that was not the same. Some of the unmade, uh, like Nergul, sometimes called the thrill, were practically mindless, more like emotion sprint. Others, such as Ba Auto Mishram, who had granted forms of forms to the singers during the false desolation, were crafty and conniving. And then later on, she because she talks about how she's a little bit of both, but she talks about how he's a god and she's going to she's going to become one. There's part of me that wonders it's because she saw what Ba Otto Mishram did and knows there's more that I can do as a result. Mm-hmm. Implying that maybe Ba Otto Mishram grew into this type of power. And it's just one of the things that's, in, especially if you go with the theory that we were talking about earlier, that it's because of uh, every time a herald broke that, you know, in the theory, if they're connected to specific unmade, that it empowers them somehow, that whoever broke the most was sort of feeding this. And then Ba Auto Mishram is watching what, uh, what Odium does to grant forms of power because she's a splinter of odium. So, you know, she has some of that ability, some ability to make, you know, enough of a connection to those powers to grant a form of power, which is, you know, that's, that's interesting. Hmm. Um, there's a quote from Ulim when he's talking to Venley. Mm-hmm. It says, eventually the unmade decided to start a war without us. That turned out to be exceedingly stupid. In the past, Odium granted forms of power, but Ba Otto Mishram thought she could do it. Ended up handing out forms of power as easily as Fuse give each other titles. Connected herself to the entire singer species. Became a little god. Too little. Yeah, Ulum definitely doesn't have a high opinion of no. <clears throat> Ba Otto Mishram. Ulam doesn't have a high opinion of anyone. We also know that Sia and Nat seems to consider Ba'ado Mishram as the most clever of the unmade. And I believe that was also confirmed in Hesse's Mythica. Mm-hmm. Or I'd rather, I guess it should be the other way around. But just the fact that it's... Um, just the fact that it's interesting that she could become a little God mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that by itself is interesting. Cause it's like, what, what made it so that you could have this much power? Because like that level of power, like that's we're we're starting to get onto the, you know, like the storm father level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the theories that's out there is that perhaps these were bondsmith level spren to begin with. Mm-hmm. And it, well, it's kind. Which, it is kind of odd that seven. there's only three. Yeah, it's kind of weird that there's only three when ten is the the holy number and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it makes so people have you know theorized that maybe there originally were ten, and with all the unmade corruption, cultivation and uh, honor made the sibling, and they're trying to get back to it. Hmm. But then, you know, honor sort of got killed. Yeah. And so some people have theorized that you could in theory become a bondsmith of an unmade. Hmm. Would, but would that put the original number of these bondsmith level spread up to 12 then? Well, it would be it, cause the, the, in that theory, it's sort of a, as they got, you know, taken away, they had to get, uh, they're getting replaced, they were getting replaced type of thing. Hmm. The other theory being that maybe, well, the other theory is just that there were just, because we do know the spren predate honor and cultivation showing up on Roshar Mm -hmm. and it could just be there. There were just 10 to begin with Mm -hmm. just naturally. 
to say know. nothing of things like Kus- 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 there we go i'm like trying to remember what it was um but but we do know that the the binding of her essentially caused the the recreants mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and apparently they were not aware that would happen yeah because well, again when they broke their o's they did not think we're making dead eyes yep yeah well and it's interesting because one like just going to uh the parchment um it's not just that it's a different form it's a form that uh is sort of stripped of both connection and identity Mm -hmm. because they just sort of exist in the space and so she she's doing things that are very complicated um the uh and but the spiritual damage even went even further she connected herself to far more because you know, then it's also affecting all the other spren as well. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. In some ways, it sort of reminds me of uh, of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter of they of Hoyd talking about how he you know put these defenses in, and then it reacted differently than he expected when he got on the planet. Mm-hmm. That as people start messing with connection and identity and these things. That even someone's experienced as Hoyd got surprised yeah. can be can be very surprised at what the effect is, right? Which then gets into the even more, you know, concerning thing of there being a Bondsmith Unchained right now. But uh, yeah, and so we just but this it's just interesting that we see that this occurred and. I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of unmade stuff in this next book. I mean, obviously they're going after Ba Auto Mishram, but I don't know. I have a feeling we're going to get a lot more than just that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing that's interesting, uh, the fact that the fact that th- this whole thing also hurt the sibling and disabled everything on your Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is the interesting part to me i think just because the sibling is just like why is that connected Mm -hmm. one it's part of why the sibling had such a hard time trusting uh yeah 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 well because malishi um i think wasn't malishi the sibling's bondsmith yes it was just double checking and so the sibling has seen like people come up with uh, come up with plans that backfire. So getting another planner is also going to be like, uh, it's like, oh, don't like this. You have a plan, do you? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, um, the other thing that's interesting is just uh, just this line in the copper mine. Cause I had forgotten about this. And since we're about to reread Oathbringer, might be good to have in uh in mind um in 1175 during the true desolation the location of ba auto mishram's gemstone prison remained unknown but the ghost blood sought it ela sadius joined a journal which shalon acquired after ela's death described the ghost bloods being obsessed with ba auto mishram shalon suspected Murray's thought that ba auto mishram would be in your theory, but shalon realized this must have been wrong because if that was true resh shafir would have freed mishram shalon wonders that since Murray's wished to move stormlight off of roshard that perhaps ba auto mishram could be used for that purpose And that, which is an interesting thought because Ba Auto Mishram apparently can make connections that she shouldn't be able to. Right. And so if your whole goal is to, you know, run your energy, you know, running scheme, getting her on your side to help do maybe connect things in ways that they shouldn't be able to could let you get Stormlight off of the planet. That's true. Mm-hmm. Stormlight or perhaps... A cognitive shadow. Yes. Yeah. That is connected to Roshar. Well, and that's the thing, you know, getting into the, just the intrigue of the what's going on with the ghost bloods, because we know that uh, they don't know everything about Thadakar. 
And that's what I was and thinking. So, like, what what if Theta Theta Car and uh, Mishram kind of had a chat? <laughs> That's a terrifying. Thought. I mean, you know, I want it, but oh, of that's course just you because want. I, I like chaos. <laughs> just think of think of the delicious drama we could get. But I have a feeling we we that's not the case because uh, at the end of Lost Metal, he, they're just talking about how they're running a muck on Roshar, yeah. right? And like that's the the ghost bloods on the or the Skadrian ghost bloods, their opinion is the Roshar and ghost bloods are running. I've gone too far. Yeah, and it's like okay, wait, you guys are the ones that are willing to cross lines. If you guys think they're a little crazy, Ooh, what's boy. uh, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, the unmade. I don't know. When we started the secret projects, I didn't expect the unmade to get more interesting, but they kind of have yeah mostly indirectly Mm -hmm. yeah because like we know that uh midnight essence is connected to ray shafir we know that or is not is that ray shafir yeah Yeah, that's ray shafir yeah ray shafir and we know that um i just blanked on yeah but ray shafir was the one that did have the most connections Mm -hmm. to the stuff well because again we saw midnight essence in two of the yeah, of the books. but like yeah. like I was talking about with Hoyd, the the unintended consequences of messing with things like connection mm-hmm. and and your own personal identity, it turned him into a statue. Well, what did what did Bao and Mishram do? She was messing with connection and identity to create forms of power for the Parshman, and what did that do? That caused them to become these just shell of a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That like needs orders because otherwise they just sort of stand there yeah. and do nothing. Yeah. And so it's just interesting. You start seeing these parallels where he, uh, he, he he's good at playing with principles in such a way that you can start to draw connections between things. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's there's so much that we don't know about the yeah. Island still. Yeah. Well, the other thing is just interesting because we now know Shalon and Adolin are going to try and find a way to break into the spiritual realm of all things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And get Ba Auto Mishram out. But last time we saw Ba Auto Mishram, she was literally leading a war against the humans. So. Yeah. I understand that, you know, binding her turned out to be a mistake. At the same time, it's like, is now the best <laughs> time to be busting her out? What do you mean? She'll she'll just be thankful that they let, let her, her out, out and, and totally be on our side. Yeah. Leaving people in prisons for thousands of years has never backfired. There's no way she's slowly gone mad in that that time. I'll say it. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> You know, now that you mentioned that, you're right. Maybe just I don't know what I'm worried about. Things, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. So Bahad of Mishram, the most interesting unmade in the world. And that's not really in the world. Not yet. Um, so <laughs> kind of out of this world. Of the world. She's still connected. Well, then that, here's the other thing. They bust her out. And it's like, hey, meet the new boss. <laughs> oh, the store is under new management. Oh, man. Yeah. Hmm. It's just it, it, there's so much that can twist. And we know that Brandon doesn't like to stick to the first twist that you think of. Mm-hmm. You got to go a few steps beyond. And he's calling a shot is what he's doing. <laughs> Yeah, when you're a best-selling author for however many books straight, mm. I guess you can do that. Yeah. When your when your when your author convention sells out in less than an hour, then you can start doing whatever you want. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, Bill, I turn it back over to you. All right. Well, oh gosh, there, like I said, there's so much going on here. But to our listeners, we love hearing from you. So please. 
Send us your questions. Uh, you can ask us about the Cosmere. You can drop us your ideas for topics that you'd like us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, we would absolutely love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories that you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere. You can send your questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to Cosmere Studies at gmail.com. And hopefully we could read that as part of the show. It'd be great. Uh, you can also reach us at the Sanderstonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah 84097. We do have our own personal projects outside the show. So, Amy, why don't you lead us off and let us know where we can find you outside this podcast? Okay. So my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long, but I like never post on it. Um, my Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. My TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay, all one giant word. And my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com. Um, I'm kind of the same old. I'm, I'm terrible about posting on like Instagram and Facebook, but I've been pretty good about putting up random tiktoks because i like filmed a whole batch of them and then i filmed some more with my mud trooper because we went and did another photo shoot Mm -hmm. so there's videos you can watch on tiktok of me doing random dumb things um and lip syncing random things and being a snarky twilight but um yeah yeah so that's and um my friend eden sanders he put up the rest of the videos that we did between his rogue stormtrooper and my jawa so if you want to watch those they're really funny just look them up on tiktok or instagram um and he's tagged me on those too so i'm a jawa who's causing chaos in his videos and it's fun um but yeah otherwise i'm just i just need to actually post all my backlog of stuff that i just haven't posted so that's what i'm doing I would totally stay at an inn called the Snarky Twilight. <laughs> oh, Jordan, how about you? Where can we find your work? Uh, when I'm not staying at the Snarky Twilight, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash splice stream or kick.tv slash splice stream. Um, I have a project that I'm going to be launching here soon. I'm not ready to say anything about it yet, Ooh. but uh, just going to be saying uh, stay tuned. I should have news next uh, stream. Is this something I know about? I, I don't know because I was talking about it while you were in the middle of your Lord of the, Lord of the Rings marathon. Oh. So I don't think you do. Probably not. Yeah, for my uh, for my birthday this year, I, every year actually, I marathon Lord of the Rings. So it's a pretty dang good tradition, in my opinion. I love it. It makes me happy. Um, all right. Well, for myself, and if it makes you happy, it can't be yeah. that bad. Why are you so sad? Anyway, my other podcast, The Innkeeper's Table, we posted our final episode on Friday. So that is a uh, bittersweet thing for me. Um, But it did feel like it was time and Dylan and I discussed and it felt like it was just the right call for now to let the show end. We've we've left the door open to come back at some point, but we have no plans to do do so at, at, at the moment. Uh, the last episode was basically just sort of a discussion between the two of us, uh, kind of doing a look back at the past four years. So I, I thought it turned out really well. It's definitely worth checking out. Moving forward, though, I think I'm going to use my time to start promoting another podcast that I'm participating in that Jordan has put together. And is a dri- and he, Jordan's the driving force behind this one. It's called I Think We Overleveled. And it's basically just a group of aging gamers reminiscing about the good old days when it comes to video games and nerdery. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I don't, so I don't quite have it in podcast form yet. I'll mm-hmm. be honest. I've mostly been leaving it to YouTube. Yep. Um, I've, I haven't edited it down right now. I'm kind of feeling things out. I don't know when I'll more formalize it, but if you go to my YouTube page, uh, we have it in live stream form. Yeah. We don't, we don't even have an I, intro for we, it or anything. So. No, not it is. It is mostly just an excuse to uh, just hang out with old friends and yep. discuss random gaming topics. But it's it's we've had some fun conversations. I th- I feel like so. Yeah, it's it's purposely chaotic. Yeah, so we do we do that on Wednesday every Wednesday night at is it eight thirty still? Yeah, same same, 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 same time, time that we do it here. Yeah, just different day. Okay. Um, and this time we're covering, oh gosh, what was it? It was, dang it. I don't Lucky, recall what the next one is. Oh, 
I think you're the one who actually brought it up, and I said that's a good idea. We oh, should do that right. next time. And you and you delayed it because you thought it needed some some prep. Yes, was it the, I needed oh, some the, prep. the physical purchasing experience back in the yes, the physical purchasing experience of video games, like when you would go to a store to buy mm-hmm. your video games the or to rent stuff. a video game or yes, in the golden age before well, Amazon, the midnight releases or just going to the store, like that's the way yeah. you got your games because. There was no Amazon. There was no Steam. There was you know, no yeah. Steam. And so it's just like, I am going to buy my game. And you like the the shops were small enough that like you might get to the point where the, the guy who owned the shop recognized you and would be like, ooh, this came in. And it, it, yeah, it was a so, different world, man. So yeah, that's our that's our next episode. That'll be on Wednesday. Well, actually, so if you're listening to this day of, it'll be tonight. Yep. Uh, for those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become a patron just yet, we would love it if you would let your friends know about the show. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Keep watching over there to help build up our things so we can get monetized. Um, and leave comments as well. We love feedback over there. And if you want to toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, we would absolutely love that. You can also head over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies and buy our merch. All right, guys. F- final thoughts? The unmade are scary. <laughs> I want I want the unmade remastered. What? I just I, I love the whole oh. Eldritch feeling of the yeah. of the unmade. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely an angle that Brandon hasn't done as much of, so and yeah, I mean, that's that's Brandon does his take on Lovecraft and you're just like, OK, didn't know that we were going to get weird fiction in here. But here we are. Yeah, If you if you go to the bottom of the Copper Mine page, there's like the trivia section. And that one actually lists what they assume are the different um, influences for the names of the different ones. Mm-hmm. And so for Dagon's, actually, apparently there's a Canaanite fisher god who's they're getting mm-hmm. the name for Dagon Arthas. But anyway. Right. No, I'm. I'm not saying that it has anything to do with the Fisher King. Oh, the I Fisher know. King actually was often benevolent. So, but it's it's yeah, a cool I, mind yeah. connection, anyway. No, I I th- I think it, I think it's con- connected to the Lovecraft Dagon. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Because that one is a fish god, and uh, well, I mean, it's Lovecraft. It's, oh, yeah. To say it's not nice is is <laughs> understatement. I mean, well, and, the year, it's well, and the Lovecraft one is probably based off on of the, of the Canaanite one. Yeah, the Canaanite one. Because yeah. Lovecraft did that. So. A lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For our next episode, we're going to be doing another deep look at an individual scene. This time, we're going to be looking at Tress of the Emerald Sea and make her and her meeting with a rather large individual. And that's as much of a spoiler as I'm going to give for the book here. Um, so make sure to join us when we stream it live next week on Tuesday, May 28th. That is one other thing. We're going to be recording at a different time for this because I'll be out of town. So Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 will be our next recording at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. And if you haven't read Tress yet, then go read it so you will be able to join in. Mm-hmm. Until then, Because it's also just really good. Yeah. Yep. And t- until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's, there's always, there's another, always another secret. Another secret.